Hello everybody, this is Kimberly from General Breeze and I'm excited to share part two of my faux antique French envelope making with you today. There is so much to share, so much to impart. Um, I, I hardly know where to begin. My goal is to not overwhelm or confuse you and I I really don't know if it's best to show you what I've made or to show you sort of how they are kind of made um, first so I've gone around and around and I wish I could ask you and you could tell me but I can't so I think what I'm going to do is um, begin with supplies. I think that might be the easier way to go. This is a really fun project and it's very addicting because the ideas are endless but it's also extremely fiddly and takes an enormous amount of time. An enormous amount of time. And that was the case because I wanted these envelopes to look realistic. Otherwise they would look like envelopes we decorated to put in junk journals. So I wanted them to look, maybe the better word to use is believable. I wanted, you know, if somebody took a glance at it, they'd, they'd honestly think it was a piece of mail. Um, you know, maybe an old piece of mail, but they would think it was really a piece of mail. And so that's closer to realistic than decorated. I, I did three with some more frivolity, you might say. Um, took some leeway. Uh, to make them, all, you know, they're a little bit more on the junk journal side, but my goal was otherwise. So, and then where I found my art, where, where I got my art needs met, was with the stamps that I chose. And I really enjoyed that because I have a lot of stamps and this gave me a chance to use a lot of them. And so I tried to make the stamps um, match or complement what was going on. And I used stamps that were, you know, like, like this envelope is American Educational Publishing House so I picked a stamp with um, Ben Franklin you know he was a publisher and an educator personified um, I also used envelopes that I had uh, dyed myself so this one has a lot of blue green on it and this is very much an aqua I hope the lights good enough an aqua color <clears throat> And so that ended up, you know, making the address often uh, difficult to sort of make look original. Like on the one I just showed you, this address is um, on a thin piece of paper so that the, I think I did this on a tracing paper. And so you can see the blue coming through it here. The same color as that is under there. But still, you can really see the outline of the address. And I wanted to avoid that if I possibly could. So I tried to match the addresses to the envelope as often as I could so that just the handwriting showed and you weren't really looking at the label. Um, and I also uh, distressed. This is a much brighter solid aqua and I distressed it quite a bit. Let's see, here we go. I distressed it, you can see, and that really helped blend it into this background that's undulated with the blue and the sort of pinky color that came out of the T. And, um, and it helps to then sort of bring this background into it. So this is the approach I took with each and every envelope, very much um, very much spending a long time on each piece trying to make it look really nice and pleasant as well as believable. Um, so where did I get my addresses? So I got a lot of my addresses from my own antique postcards and I copied some of them Let's see, I made little piles here, 
for you to try to stay on task. I, I copied some just on copy paper, so they ended up being the same color as the postcard. And some I did on a, on a bright white 24 pound paper. And this is on a linen, beige linen paper. And uh, this is on regular copy paper. And this is on an old, uh, you know, it's been aged in my garage, sort of thinnish paper, pre-copiers, so it would have been typing paper. And this is the linen paper again, linen and regular copy paper. Oh no, this has got a watermark on it, so this might be onion skin. Yeah, this is an onion skin paper. And I really liked when they were translucent because then the, the color tended to not stand out so much. And then I also printed my postcards onto very, very thin tracing paper, vintage tracing paper, so it doesn't have any name or anything that I can tell you about, but it's ultra thin. It goes through my printer without any problem. And so I would try to use these colors because you can see how much darker it gets. I would try to use them on a dark envelope so that they kind of disappeared into the background. And some of the postcards that I copied onto the tracing paper were in fact a white postcard. So they do tend to have more of a disappearing, but nothing totally disappeared because the postcards are truly antique. So they had a certain amount of dirt and, you know, just aging on them. So nothing really ever completely went away, I have to say. And then I also got addresses um, by cutting, you know, by like, this is really a copy of a postcard. And this might have been a digital, and but I would just cut this out and that would, you know, I would just use that as is if, it, if I could get that to match. And this was very yellow. Loved it. Would have loved to have used it, but it really was too yellow. And this is a postcard for sure. And this one, um, I think, was a postcard that I, um, you know, a digital, I think. Or maybe it's one I bought and then copied. I don't remember. I found this in my stash. So if you can find white postcards in your own stash, you know, just put four on a on a page, and then and then make a copy. I didn't scan or anything like that. So um, and here's a couple more postcards. Yeah, twice. All right. So so you want to get postage stamps, addresses. You know, you might have some rubber stamps with addresses that you want to use. You might like to do calligraphy and do your own addresses. You know, whatever it is that you like to do, that's the way you want to go with it. But I was unable. I searched and searched to find rubber stamps or cling stamps that had addresses that looked like legitimate mail. And they're, they're non-existent except for that one carte postale stamp. And, you know, I have postcards, so why would I need to buy a cart postal stamp and just use it over and over again? That wasn't very appealing. And I didn't want to rely too heavily on stamps. I mean, I have my I have my stamps that I did use somewhat, but I actually really didn't want to use them all that much because, then it, again, it just looks like junk, junk journal postal uh, envelopes. And there's nothing wrong with those. They're beautiful. I've made them. I love them. But I wanted to do something different. That was that was the thing. So I didn't want to, you know, use a lot of what we normally use. And this was the only postmark that I have in my collection, except for one small rub-on. And um, and it bro it's broken up. This whole set used very broken up lines to do everything in order to make it look old. Like this word vintage, it, it's just all really bubbly and broken up. So it's kind of cool when you want that look, but I found that it wasn't really the look I was going for, so I didn't use it as much as I may have used it. And I used black ink. I think one time I maybe used brown, and then I realized, no, I would rather use black. So, um, and then you need glue stick and glue. And, um, and then envelopes. So go through your stash of envelopes. You can see I have every size every size, every type. I have this type, you know, that was the seed thing. Um, I took a long pink one, or yeah, it's pink. I took a long one. 
and uh, large ones and um, I showed this in the last one but I actually at did more to it and um, yeah just find things that you wanted to use that you like and I have a stack over here that I haven't even touched I still have a million ideas but it's so time consuming that I, I'm not really getting to some of the other things I want to do and, and I made I think so far like 33 so I've you know I, at some point you just got to stop so doing this for you today was a way to kind of find sort of a end that I could find and then you know I'll come back to it uh, as I need to and then I have my little tray of um, stamps I mean I have buckets of stamps so this is just kind of the working ones and I did cut out um, stamps that had the postmark around it so that I would have postmarks available and I ch I have stamps I have bought that have the postmarks or the uh, line postmarks on them and I used a lot of those as opposed to using the ones that hardly have anything but I did try to pick out the stamps that had at least some kind of postmark on them since my own stamp collection wasn't really going to give me a lot of opportunity to put those marks on there um, here's another one and I also had some vellum vellum ones or um, tracing paper stamps with the postmark here and those were really handy again I would try to match that coloring to the one I would use the address made on tracing paper and then um, a lot of these French the French would their stamps are shaped like ovals and I don't know I think these have something to do with customs maybe I'm not really sure but they're on the antique letters all the time so I I collect these from just different places and uh, and then we put them on I also saved out uh, the round postmark thing and then I have Easter seals which I never really used and then this came from something I cut up that has the postmark on it some sort of I think these are German and um, it seems like the French people in Europe would use unusual looking things on their envelopes coupons are called sometimes these cust these cust customs things or whatever they are so anyway I just I would look at sometimes they were on digitals as in the body of the digital they weren't intended to be cut out and I would cut them out and you know just see them in different places and then um, priority you know you get this on more current stuff so I didn't really use it because it's too bright and then this came out of some digital and it was a circle so that was good oh here's one of those coupon things um, and this is a way you can get stamps from the top of a postcard digital and then cutting out these French circles sometimes not that you would really see this on an envelope but you know I, I did take some leeway sometimes and then this is these I, I got in a stamp collection and this is how it came exactly like this I think I cut the top and bottom off a little bit but they were really oh yeah I did they were really um, that's all you got you didn't get the whole word airmail if I had gotten the whole word I would have left it on there but it's got the Bristol England stamp and uh, of course the Queen Mary I mean Queen Elizabeth so you know and this says civil defense and um, something else so you know it's good for government types of letters I tried to match the stamps with who I was addressing it you know where, where the what kind of company it was coming from and um, you know played around some of the, I had one address I was using a lot from Ireland so this um, little sign this little label thing it says Dublin I would have used it had I had I found a way to use it um, yeah, and more of these. Um, you know, sometimes the addresses were really small, like this one. Uh, another uh, postmark and stamp. This looks like an address. You'll see how I used it. But it's not, but it looks like one. And the color gray is a hard one to find in my stash. So I ended up using that as, a, as an address. 
Yeah, and just different things that just look like they would be on an envelope. That's the kind of thing to look for. And so I have little piles over here on my right. I have a whole thing set up, and I just had masses of these things. And then I would just go in and look, just like a jigsaw puzzle. Exactly like that. Bring my envelope over, take a look, see what colors might work, bring them back, lay them out. And then what I found <clears throat> as time went on and my choices were becoming less because I was using more of what I had, I then started leaving these items out overnight. I left them out so that hours would pass. And then I could come back and I could look at them and see them with fresh eyes. And when I saw them with fresh eyes, I often made changes. And they were always for the better. And sometimes an envelope just comes together and you can glue it together really fast. And it's great. When that happens, I do. But that doesn't always happen. <laughs> so let me just remind you of the... Um, the letter that I had first I want to show you a new way to fold that's what I want to show you next okay so this is traditionally how you know the French letters are, are folded that are that copies are often made by today's printable makers you know like this would be inside of there it's so fragile I don't want to put it back in but they end up being this long rectangle and beautiful and I love them but um, you know this is real so this stamp is real love the color and it's really got a letter inside and it's really old 18 something or another but you can see the whole thing is really a 1861 it's really a long rectangle shape and that's limited so here I am trying to emulate envelopes that I saw from the Monaghan company and they were more they were larger like this for example and they had the black engraved addresses and names of the companies across the top and down the side that's what I saw that was so mind-blowing and actually had a great big one here and then it went around and went up here it was a very quick picture, or I was in a hurry and didn't get to stare at it for very long. But they were kind of spread out, and you could see they were all the same, engraved, engraved, engraved. So that's what was motivating me this whole time, was to copy that as much as I could. Well, it wasn't that hard to get the engraved across the top, but it was tricky to come up with engraving on the bottom. So I would often piece together, and that, was a, that took a lot of time because I was piecing together some different pieces but it was fun, you know, it was really, I love what I've come up with. I'm super excited about every single piece, but it, but it's not, a t it's not something to do quickly. So I copied this one exactly and I made it connect this way. So it, it looks the same, you'd never know, but I connected it this way. Um, don't ask me. I don't even know why. I could have cut these off and then it would have tucked in and it would have been exactly like this one. But in my effort to get more of a face so that I had more room to play with, that, that was the goal, I ended up folding in a different way altogether. So this is the same envelope as this. the copy so that is one way that you're going to be able to you can use some of these envelopes that you can buy from you know Heather I mean all the vendors really that make anything that looks antique or, or French or whatever they're all providing these pre-printed envelopes in there oh I'll show you how they look they look like this Okay, so if you see this in any of your kits, it will probably have darkened lines. Maybe not this dark, but it'll have lines. And then the other side on this one is the plain. They don't always provide the inside, or sometimes the inside is a letter. It doesn't matter because you can just print anything you want on this side. And I had fun printing different things on mine. 
and you can do the same thing but this is the outside so on this one if I was going to decorate it I would fold it so that this was inside so that I would have the outside plain and I could do with it what I want so I'm going to show you how you can use the ones that they give you or that you have in your stash already that have the address on it um, but fold it differently so that A, you get the square instead of the skinny triangle and B, you can have a surface that's plain. So I think back when they made these originally in the 1800s, 1700s, perhaps even earlier, uh, you know, they would reuse them. You know, you've all seen the letters where people write across going this way and then somebody will send it back and they will have written across going this way. Sometimes it's all the same handwriting and they do it intentionally, but a lot of times it was to save paper. So one person would send it and that person sending back would, would write on it in a way that it was readable and it was the same piece of paper. So I figured they could also easily cross off the first address and then they could put a new address on the other side. And that's what I did here. And I even thought that since this was a, a piece of, here was the address and here was the return address, I could um, bend it over since I was able to cut it out that way. I have no idea where I got this, so please don't ask. But um, I could bend it over and, and realistically they could have put it over there like that because it would close the flap and then I put one of the um, French customs uh, stamps down here. I haven't completely glued it. I just kind of put it on there for, for the moment. But you can see right now, you can see these oddball stamps they have. It says Exchange Liverpool. So obviously you know this is Palermo so for all I know this looks Italian you know, Lucio or Cusio, Pietro, Lucio, Capucini. So it sounds Italian. Palermo even sounds Italian. So I guess it had to go through England. But anyway, this says Bordeaux, so it's pretty obvious it's French. But, you know, I mean, come on. At some point I had to <laughs> give up the believability. From a glance, it all looks real to me. So... I wanted to show you how I folded it to get it to be this big square. So here's what you do. You're going to take any piece of paper you have. You can do it right now with me. Just grab a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper. And um, like this one, if you had this one, for example, you would cut off your margin. Cut off your margin. So then you're working with a smaller piece. This is Heather and Pearl. I mean, uh, Ruby and Pearl. <laughs> and um, and then after you cut it down, then you're going to work with what I'm going to show you. So it folds out to be <clears throat> this size. Oh, boy. Hold on here. folds out to be this size and what you're going to do is you're going to fold the two sides in together and generally um, you're going to have the meat in the middle but it doesn't matter but it's easier to just take your piece and you have the meat in the middle than whatever made me do this I don't know and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut on this. Okay, wait a minute. You're going to meet in the middle and then you're going to fold this up to leave about, you know, three quarters to an inch at the top. So you might think it's the same thing that the rectangle is doing, but it's not. The rectangle is folding the long way. And I am folding. See how? See what I'm saying? Okay. So the way you can get the larger surface area is to start with your paper from this direction. And this is how they did it during World War II, also. So it's not like I invented it. And now you're going to fold it up, not all the way to the top, but down. 
and then you're going to cut this off, this flange. You're going to cut it off, and I sort of make make it sort of like that, and then it folds inside here. And I can see if you don't cut it off, it still folds inside. So that's fine. Cut it off or don't cut it off. Do what you want. And put that on. I would glue this down. I would take a pen. You'll see. I did it on one. And I would just do X's like this because that's what I've seen them do. And then glue this down on this side. Glue this down on this side. And that would be my finished letter. And that could go right into a journal. No problem. Thing is, you could never open it. So if it mattered, you know, the person who got the journal or whatever, they'd have to take a knife and go in there and cut that or a scissor. But hopefully that folding will help you to have more of the surface available. And again, remember, this does not have to be face up. You can print something on the other side that's blank and then this would be on the outside. So it's entirely up to you. You can reuse what you have. Okay. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is show you, um, okay. I think, I hope I'm not getting ahead of, ahead of it. I hope you can follow. But I'm going to show you one that is in um, the works. And I actually would have glued it down if I wasn't doing this, you know, quasi-tutorial. I would have glued it down already. So I have a rather large, oh no, I made this. This is a coin envelope I made myself. From a, from a yellowish piece of paper. Very pale yellow. I'm trying to get the light to make it look as yellow as it is. It's really pretty. And I, obviously, I don't know that I'm going to do any kind of fancy closure because the I want this side to always be the side that shows. So depending on how I use it in the journal, I'll determine what I might do for the closure. But I love this paper. And this is a um, very large, you know, one of the lucky finds to find one so big but to find a a receipt here when I say receipt I literally went in and I printed out receipts by different people and then I would cut the tops in different ways I'd cut I'd piece I'd glue back sometimes I'd cut this off and glue it to the bottom this one that's like too big so I just took out this chunk over there I might cut out that stamp and use that these are from Ida Jane designs this is a huge a huge header so I dip, made it in different sizes the printing part takes forever because you're making like three and four sizes of everything I made smaller and smaller sizes of this and this and I use them you'll be seeing that and you know cutting them up using them in ways that you have to actually think about it and have your envelope and start to think okay you know what's going to look good there and what's going to work there and um here's some more uh this is a smaller version this was hard to use because the color gray. I just don't have envelopes that color. Although I did dye some envelopes to get them to look gray, and um, and they do, but it still didn't really fit. This is from a receipt from Ida Jane Designs, and I used a lot of. Um, I use these on several envelopes. I really like them, and so I made them in many different sizes, and then cut them up, and because they have a, a military feel. I um, liked this airmail letter to go with them, and um, and then this airmail stamp. So I tried again to sort of keep the theme that was happening going, if I possibly could. He had to have some reason to choose something, so I picked these reasons. And then this is that large one I showed you, cut smaller. 
You could cut it up here, go around there and cut over there. I chose to leave this here. You know, it, it makes for a, a different shape. But if you wanted to be really strict about it, you could just cut right up there, go around that oval, and cut straight across there. Depends on your envelope, depends on what's going on. But finding engraved receipts that have the engraving going down the side is like gold. It's like it's like you've hit the jackpot. And then this one that's really big. You know, if you have an envelope big enough, that's divine. You could also cut this so that you're just using this. Or you can cut it and just use that. This one, you could just use the ship. Or you could just use this. Or you could just use that. I found this was, again, sort of difficult to use because of the color primarily. Um, this one I used, I'll be able to show you, but that speaks for itself. Made that in different sizes. And then these, um, you know, you could cut here and then go up here and then go over here. I always try to include the actual address of the, you know, this is a return address, right? So I always try to include the address whenever possible. They don't always have an address on these receipt tops, but I would try to use them. And I like this a lot. I just haven't found an envelope that will work with this. Or this could be used separately and this could be used separately. I did use this and you can see I drew a pencil line down here and around here. You might, you know, draw yours further down and, and keep Mr. Young's name in there as proprietor. You might move your line up and not have it say San Francisco Chronicle Building. What I really noticed that was interesting historically, I bought, th these are from um, Sweet Pea Curiosities. She has a set of quite a few and when I noticed on hers in particular but it wasn't just hers it was also some other receipts a lot of them had pencil marks all over the top it's like people if they didn't have a stamp that said received or you know a check that they've read it they would do some sort of squiggle thing like initials or an X or a check so a lot of the tops were actually <laughs> sort of destroyed for my purposes, but I, I would find ways to use them. Like I would cut right above here so that not too much of that would show. And just having a little bit show like that, I didn't care about. So, you know, you start to really look at these things a lot closer. And, um, and it, it's interesting historically. And here's another one. Um, I didn't think it printed out very clear, so I, I think I would have made it smaller. But Old Hickory Chair Company, I love that. So if it with the resolution were better, I'd like to use it. Even the Brown Shoe Company, I think, could have been used. And then the White House Shoes and the Buster Brown Shoes could have been put on the left of it. So you could cut this out, but not include all this section and move it over closer to the shoe so that there's room on the right for the, for the stamps to go. And then you could cut this out and put it down here. So you do a lot of fussy cutting if you want, you know, if you want to do it the way I did it. And then this being my favorite receipt of all times, this huge v version I used, um, and, and then I used smaller versions, smaller sizes. I love the color, so I'll be showing you those. So, now you're getting hopefully some idea. Hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. So, I played with this. This was an overnight project. It's Italian and this is going to France, and Bordeaux is France, and then this says Portugal, so I put it next to the Italian, and then I would put this in here to kind of complete this circle of sorts, and this again is on the, the vellum, and so, it, you know, this is a yellow envelope, so it comes to kind of creamy, and then this is on a receipt from, um, you know, the Rachel and Bach, Rock and Bach, I call them. <laughs> um, they have some receipts that have uh, embroidered flowers on them. And I think, well, I might have time. I, if I keep trying to find everything, we'll never get done. So I'm going to move on. All right. And then here's another one. Um, I personally love saving. This happened to be a copy, but I have the original glued down already, I think. And um, so... This is stained because the original was stained. 
and this envelope I tea stained. You can see that, hopefully. And so I, um, oh, you know what? I've got more lead I can put on here. What do you know? Yeah, okay. I wouldn't believe all the high powered lights I have, and still, it looks a little on the dark side. So the undulation to me sort of helps to distract the eye from the fact that that's whiter. And it's, I think, a military in a way. You know, it's got the World War II plane, propeller planes. And then Department of State, you know, this was a much longer. It had all kinds of stuff and stuff below. I cut it down so it would fit there. It's Navy. This is Navy. And then um, she lives, Neva Gaskin, Miss. She lives in Flint, Michigan. And so I was able to make that work and then I put the post office this is a digital kit you know I think um, I think this came from a kit from a long time ago from um, you know um, her name uh, Artie Mays Artie Mays so uh, so you know I would just glue these down and then I would be completely happy with these and I picked this stamp. I saved it knowing I was going to eventually make this coin envelope. I just love it. And, and I, you know, the bird and the lines and the moon and the sun and the fact that it says Italy and, um, you know, Le Mans. It's colonial world, the colonial world illustrated. So it's some sort of a magazine or, or published thingamabob. And these are very appealing to me so this is the kind of thing that I'm going to be showing you done and two more that I, I have left unglued to to show you so that you can appreciate when we get to the done ones uh, what went into them because it's a lot a lot goes into them this one is particularly of interest to show you because this gray background. This is one of the envelopes that I dyed myself. And um, I used black ink in the water. And this <laughs> I pieced together. I cut this piece out of the receipt at the bottom and I glued it on here but now I'm beginning to think that I cut this piece out because it all looks like one piece in the back so this this must have been one bigger piece that I cut out from the bottom of the receipt and then I glued this header to this bigger piece because it's all one piece in the back so I cut out the header in this shape and then below I love this design, and I know it's really fat to go on this small envelope. So, you know, I took a little leeway. This is one I made recently. But I, I really loved the flowers and the way they look on the gray, because I'm not crazy about gray. And then this was actually near the top of this receipt, and it's one of those ones where I think it looks like an address. I mean, if you read it carefully, you know it's not an address, but it looks like an address. So I I decided, you know, it would work. And then this had a purpley look to it. And then I went through a lot of different iterations of stamps, and I felt that the ones that kind of picked up the floral design were just too new. They looked too white. So um, I went with these kind of dark mauve and I, I like the look and I thought about overlapping this stamp and then I decided no I think what I'll do is put it on its side like that and you know I think we would put a, you know sometimes you put stamps up and down you know what does it matter right it's a stamp when you're putting it on a letter so you can really add to your header in any way you want and all in all I think it's a very pretty piece and yet it looks believable I think and then the last one is this 
And this one, this is a, a real 1952 corner from an envelope. I have hundreds of letters from this guy to his wife. Hundreds. And this particular paper is very lovely. Oh my gosh, some of the stationery he used that he was given at the different forts he was at in, in the war then, Korean War, um, are just beautiful. I have envelopes with parachutes, parachute men. Um, this is a very thick parchment paper. I wish you could feel it. It's textured. It's, it's high quality stationery. So I ripped it off the corner of the envelope, and this is a tea dyed envelope that I, or maybe coffee dyed. And so rather than cut it across here and shape it, I thought, okay, this is going to be one of my uh, leeway ones. So I'm going to glue it on like that and let all those rough edges show. And then this color is very, very similar, very similar. And, you know, it's, co it's coming from Fort Benning and so, and it's military. So I'm thinking, okay, they don't really need much more than that. Maybe that's a, a you know, military base there. So to me, that was a sufficient address. Like this whole town could just be military. And then this I did for the coloring and to fill up some of the space down here. And then this is two different sizes of that receipt that I showed you earlier. This is from a very small version of that receipt. And this is from a middle-sized version of that receipt. And then I made a very large version of that receipt. I think I used it so you'll be able to see. Yeah. Well, it's the same size. And I opted to cut it out all the way around. You can also opt to leave on the blue. But it's so beautiful. I love this design. I love the oak leaves that are coming on either side of the eagle. I love the eagle, uh, the coins that, you know, signify certain things and have the um, crests on them. It's just such a beautiful piece. And then I cut this out smaller so that it could, it could fit. It was going to be too tall. So if I glue this down to the very, very bottom and then glue this down to the like this little design at the bottom won't show, which is unfortunate because it's cute, but the only way I can make this work is like that. So there you go. So this is how this will look. So I'll glue this first because things would go over this, not under it, right? Because this would be a printed piece on this envelope. So if, I, so if this address was bigger, it would have to go over to be realistic, but I'm going to just move it over. And there you go. I think it's cool. I like I like this. Some sort of a stampy thing. All right. So I think you've got the gist. Some of you are saying, oh, my Lord, I would never go to all that trouble. And others of you are saying, wow, this looks like fun. If you like puzzles and you like type, face, you like font, and you like fussy cutting, which I don't, but I didn't mind on this, um, then this, this will be a really fun thing for you to do. So I will start to show you. I don't want to go too much longer. I've got, I'm going to move. I'm going to move forward here. All right. So hopefully I've given you so many examples. I don't need to go into each thing with too much, um, with too much because my voice is going to run out and I'm working. So <laughs> I can't afford to lose my voice. But this is an example of one where I cut it, cut it out. And I love that it's fun inside. And then fold it up just to remind you. And then you tuck that in. So my first ones are all this tuck type. And then I started using my own envelopes. So this is, you know, a real stamp, and then this was a stamp that I printed on vellum. And this woman's postcard had this on there. So it was very hard to find a way to keep that on there and use it, but I was able to with this. And then, of course, I picked the green and the green. And then this is one of the coupons from France where, you know, it'd be worth one, one franc. So I don't know, some sort of a surcharge. 
I think that turned out really believable and really attractive. It's a very, very pretty color green. This is another one I really love. Now, this is a um, tea stained, coffee stained uh, CD envelope. And um, this I cut out of a header of a digital by Vintage in Me, I think it is, or Vintage by Me. And this is a piece of um, tracing paper that isn't modeled, but once I put it down on top of this, the modeling came through. I mean, is that gorgeously realistic looking or what? And then these coupons in lieu of a stamp. And again, green and a beauty. A beauty. Okay. And then this one. This is a beautiful paper from Heather at Ruby and Pearl. Oh my god, I love this so much. I think this is from one of her newer kits. Lily or something like that. Not letters, but Lily. Or I bought some of her older kits recently too, so I'm not sure, but I know it's hers. And then this this is her blue on the outside from another kit. I think her receipts kit. I bought two receipts kits from her. I think it was the earlier one. This is an example of where I blended one headers portion with this other headers portion. You probably thought they were all from one header, but they're not. So I distressed it and and then I put more distressing on top of it even more to have it just blend together and then this is a um, stamp that was on tracing paper and I put the Montreal postmark which is a tracing paper stamp on top of it so that it looks like it's all one piece but it wasn't and then I put um, a tracing paper address there and I just think it looks very realistic and I love this there's cows in this picture and it's just a beautiful piece I'm not sure. I think it's also Ida, Ida Jane. This one is a refold. This is where I, you know, told you I put the X's, or actually I put it, I put those uh, uh, Tim Holtz stamps that had the, the lettering going in both directions. I stamped those over that. But the original address that came on this Heather envelope is what I covered up, and I love this. Stamp. It's a copy of a, a centennial stamp in Spain, I think it is. And um, and then this is cut from that same receipt as the other blues, but I didn't. This was separate from it. In other words, this is higher up on the page, and then this is lower. So I kept the blue background because of the blue envelope, and then I put a name, you know here because I wanted it to look more realistic and then I this I cut out of something who knows what and there you go and it's got a lot of this worn stuff so this all to me just made sense I, I thought it was a good thing a good uh, realistic looking thing this is one of those seed packets a lot of you have this is a real um, you know this came off a letter I got recently from France. Couldn't throw it away, of course. Love it so much. And so so I so I can open it up if I want to. It's holding it down. And then this is from a completely different uh, receipt header. I'm just going to say header. Different header than this. This, I think, is from that. And then this is a postcard. And I believe it's a digital or it's a postcard I had and copied, but it's very small. It's almost identical to the size of the window. So I decided to let that stamp and stuff, it says Versailles and Paris, and so I just thought, okay, just leave that, don't put a stamp there, and just build up this one side. So I, I think it's attractive. I really like it a lot. If you wanted to have gray or a neutral or a black and white, I think it really is a beautiful piece. This one I took coffee and I 
all over it. And first I did the coffee without anything on it. And then after I got done gluing on all my pieces, I did more so that they landed on top. And you know, so this is cut out, this is cut out, this is cut out, that's cut out, that's cut out. This is just a plain piece of paper. There is nothing going on here at all. Yeah, just a, it's got lines on the other side. So yeah, so you just have to, you know, I just collected pieces from all different things. And this is a one cent postage. It's um, a president, Pope maybe, and then United States of America, to me it all fit, and uh, New York City, kept it in America, and the Century Collection, so maybe it's some sort of a, you know, exhibit that they were having. And, um, and this address looks like it was made from this envelope or made from this piece of paper, but it wasn't. And it just went together well, and I felt like splattering my coffee. So, you know, you just feel like you want to do that, you do it, right? <laughs> That's the fun of this. All right, so this is that really cool thing from Tracy Fox. I These are three-dimensional buttons that I put on top of the buttons that are printed there because I like the ones that she gave, gave as an addition better than the ones printed there. This one is printed there, but the others were uglier, I thought. And so I put the buttons onto cardboard and then put the cardboard button onto the piece. So there's all kinds of dimension. And then I added this label and this word and this so that it could be tucked in. So it could go through the mail. And then this is a, um, you know, I built that. This is one piece, I believe. And then I added that. And then this is my postmark. And I put postmark lines under it, and then I covered it with this beautiful stamp. I thought the coloring was really good. And then this um, unusual color for and a dress went really well with this. So I didn't cover up too much of this. It's sort of like a doily, only it's a medallion sort of fades away and there's just this peach showing through. So I was able to save quite a bit of that. I worked a long time on this one. I was having a hard time with it because this was a little crooked and that bothered me a lot. So I built up more to try to distract one's eye from the the crookedness. It actually was printed crooked or something, so I couldn't have made it straight without there being envelopes showing on this side, so there was no answer. It wasn't like I glued it down crooked by accident. It just, it just, it ended here for whatever reason. Maybe there was a, I don't know, I don't know, but there was no other, it, it couldn't be made straight. And I did feel that the color was really good, so I wanted to make it work. So I like, I like the button thing. And here's another one. Um, this is using more of that medallion type of thing. And then this was another piece on that same piece of paper. But I cut it out. It actually goes down like this. But I cut it off there to kind of add it. And to pick up on the white down here. And then I felt like this then sort of, you know, the gray. And then this is another piece from that piece of paper. And I decided to tuck it under there and just make it sort of fancy looking, you know. I just uh, got playful with this. And then this is a stamp I put on. This is my own Paris postage mark and my, and my Paris stamp. So I think that turned out really well. And this is another one of the letters that I marked up on the back and refolded. I love this one. This was a um, envelope that I distressed, you know, by putting it down in the Tim Holtz spray inks. And it was too dark, you know, it was too dark to really use for anything, I felt. So I thought it was good for this. So this is tracing paper that was a very dark envelope. So it actually is as dark as that. So it was the perfect envelope, perfect tracing paper to choose. And then again, poke and United States. And these are two separate things. And then this is a real French stamp and one of those custom things. And then my New York and my um, postal mark. So I think that's, I like that a lot. And a grunge piece, that will be perfect. This was all very beige. So I built it up more. The blue was my secondary color. 
I actually uh, put it on the outside. I thought that this color was so beautiful. Beautiful. And I was playing around. This is one of the first ones I made. So I've already cut it out before I started printing on the inside with pretty stuff. So but that's okay. And these are all cut out. They're all separate. They're all from different places. I think this is part of this. Yeah, this doesn't feel cut out. So it's part of this. And um, I like it. I think in the right journal it's going to look really cool. This is one I showed you on that first film, but I added another stamp. And this isn't actually one big thing. I added one that I could make it make the line go around so that it looks like it's one big thing. This was on the envelope because this is, you know, this is the original folded the other way. So I added these two stamps, kept the color, made it look like it was postmarked, and, um, and I'm real happy with it now. And this is another one that I showed you last time. I added another stamp. I felt that blue was really ideal with this. This one I've shown you, keeping the Ben Franklin theme. It's Bicentennial, so it's a stamp I really want to save and putting it with this publishing house. This I think is beautiful. This is very sophisticated looking. Crest, and then I picked, or this um, name came with it, and, and it's a very sophisticated looking font. And this is glued on separate with the postmark. And then I put my own Paris stamp over it. And I blended it into the partial postal stamp that's below it. And then I like that this is USA because it's coming from France. And this is just, a, I don't know, an, an illegible handwriting. So I like this a lot. Yeah, and I just felt like the color of it is just sophisticated. I didn't want to add other stuff to it. This is that giant one that I showed you earlier. And um, this is the return address up here for for them. I love that it's all one piece. And this coloring I chose because I felt it went really great with that. And then I put these stamps on. I felt, you know, the engraving is so obvious here. And also the woman back here, you can barely see her because that postmark is German, was already on there, which is too bad because I would have loved to have seen her because the blue is the same color. I mean, these are just so beautiful together. Went back and forth about George, but the white and the white, I felt that looked really good. And he's, he's sort of a navy gray. So yeah, so I thought that was very pretty. Sometimes I put stuff inside. And then this is one where I showed you that um, San Francisco Chronicle. This was an envelope I was gifted. So it already had all this patina and grunginess around it. I did an exchange with somebody in Norway, and that's my heritage. So she sent me a little extra stuff about Norway, written in Norway language, Norwegian language, and uh, this stamp. And then I just extended this delightful postal stamp. I extended the lines so they went over this to kind of draw it together. And the coloring in this is the same coloring in the goose. So I, I thought it was cool. You know, it's a little more brown maybe than this but that's okay I I like it because it's from Norway and and she gave it to me and um, I didn't want to cut this off here even though I didn't like that squiggle because I wanted to make sure there was enough room to get that fully present because it's such a cute postal stamp this is a uh, I bought this from um, Yvonne Preston her shop so I, I made this side the one that I would work with. And this was a set of stamps and London postmark all on one thing. <clears throat> I cut that out. This is from another. This is something else I cut out and put there. This is from something entirely different. I grunged it up. And this is from a, a William Morris picture on one of Heather's kits. Or maybe not William. Well, yeah, I think it was like a William Morris design, but it wasn't in the William Morris kit of hers. Anyway, they all went together, and I love the background envelope. So obviously the blue stamp, green stamp, 
is what I wanted to pick up on, and I love his helmet. Just, I don't know, it just felt good to me. I love this handwriting. <clears throat> He's the editor for Country Magazine, New York. So, I just, I just did that. I like it. This one, this is a really nice piece of stationery. Really nice. And I did this late at night. <laughs> and when I woke up in the morning, I realized, oh, it's probably a little too red. But I was trying to pick up the blue aqua and the golden. Can you see how this pocket, this um, envelope has natural staining on it? Under here, it's got a lot of white. Just see that up there? There's like whiteness here and then brown is here. Just, it just got, probably laid in the sun and ended up getting patinaed, you can see. So this I cut out and glued onto this piece behind that I cut out. And then I glued this. So in other words, I disassembled this completely. And I took all these different pieces and I glued them up in such a way as to make my own design. And I think it looks totally real. And I love that about it. And then I put this here because it was such a big gap. And this was so enormous, I felt it needed something. And I just thought that went well. And then this is a uh, tracing paper postcard of mine for another country. And then I put my um, stamp here. And, you know, I could cover this up with another stamp. But I really like this. So, it, you know... Without the stamp, it might be a little ordinary. Stamp kind of makes it pop. I could do without all the white. I think that's my biggest complaint. But it's a legit stamp that I could use today, so it's kind of fun to have used such a current stamp. And I like it. I, I love how I built that up. That took a long time to figure out. And then this is a, sort of a different type of envelope. I folded it into... into that sort of a shape and then I put holes in both the bottom and the top and tied it together because this probably you know would not necessarily go through the post office maybe it would be hand delivered but this stamp from the Red Cross International Red Cross was just such a beautiful addition that I did put a stamp on it at first I wasn't going to but I ended up putting it on there. And then this is my postmark for New York. Roma Street. I'm, I'm saying they're in New York. And then this handwriting. I don't know. This this background color just really went with that. I thought, well, it's got, it's got a gray look to it. And it says New York, New York. So I like that. And that was fun. This is the pink one. And um, it needs to be glued better. So this was a receipt that had a lot of buildings on it and a lot of black. And I liked it. I thought it was a really good example of, uh, you know, the kind of envelope I saw from Monaghan. So I made it work. I looked for lots of pink uh, stamps, which they really were more on the purple or hot pink side. And they didn't look very good. So I went with the red, um, orangey red, and, you know, I'm okay with it. Now, this one has pink, purple, and that orangey red. So that's when I thought to myself, oh, wait a minute, pink, can you see how pink that is? I, I wish the colors were true. This is a very hot pink. It looks not close to hot pink in my monitor, but who knows how it looks on your end. This is a very hot pink where it says progress in electronics. This is a pale pink. This is a pale green, and this is the same orange red as this and this. And then this is a very darkish red, too. And so I felt like I could reason it out to where it felt good to me. And then all of these things are about progress. This is a Colonial Expedition International in Paris. This is a, a stamp from someplace in Europe. This person obviously 
is in the USA. And I thought that was in the end pretty good. Where I'll use it, since I don't want to use pink that much, and its height, I do not know. But who knows? Maybe it'll, you know, be an extra. Alright, this one, this um this is the same building I used before, and it's not San Francisco, I don't think. So I cut this out of something else and then glued it down there. And this is something entirely different. This was not part of that, but I felt that it looked like it because of the engraving. And then these are all from my stamp collection. They're all real. And then my stamp here. And then this, I felt, went pretty good with the background. And then I glued this down here, U.S. National Museum of collect Collections of Theo Pergande. Don't ask me why, but the green picked up on here, and I just, it's in Durham, so it makes me think of Ireland, it makes me think of green, and it's just, I don't know, it just needed something. Here I had all this beauty, and then, and I think that's beautiful too, and then all of a sudden nothing. So this just gave me a chance to kind of bring the eye down and bring some prettiness to the whole thing, and then this just I felt, again, with that gray, it just went. And it's a big envelope. Big. I mean, five, seven, seven. Yeah, five by seven. They're harder to make, believe me. Okay, this is another example of, um, of I cut out this beautiful thing. Same thing. Cut this out, and I glued it onto a wonderful textile card or uh, button card from uh, Udolcina. And then I cut out the word Nouveau, and I glued it on the bottom. So uh, this was so beautiful. I left in this. I just I love how this came out. Use a yellow postcard. It's uh, tracing, but it came out kind of yellow, and I didn't mind. And then um, this was, I glued, this had a partial postmark, and then I I may have cut, fussy cut around it, or it might be from another one that I just glued it on top, but they're definitely glued together. They're not one. And then these, I think, are on tracing paper, and so is that. And then this paper has a yellow pinstripe. I don't know. Yeah, I think you can see it. Beautiful. So it's really, I just think, a beautiful one of the last ones I did. Then this is a really fantastic coffee dyed envelope I didn't want to waste. I put a piece of fabric under here originally that says create and so I ended up having to work around it and I felt like this coloring was so ideal and then this is the original um, corner to the uh, of the airmail. This is the real stamp and the real deal and I, so I love it. I absolutely love it, and I'll definitely use it, and I'll fill it with something, and you know maybe it'll be a flip because it's so big. It's enormous. Yeah, it's going to be five by seven also. Oh, I just love it though. I love the olive green. I love all these plain, airplane uh, stamps, and I just think it looks very realistic. Very. Oh, and I just added this at the bottom, and that cut that from something else. And then this is the one I made in the first video, but I ended up adding all these stamps, and I added. I added this, and then I put these stamps on just to cover it up a little more. And this is one I'm going to use and have it be a side fold because I think it's because I like this. I don't like the back, so I'm going to glue that down, and then this will be like a side pocket. So I, I and it says booksellers and stationery. So. And then the last three are the ones where I took more liberty. So this wonderful green top, which came from Heather's recent receipts, um, went all the way across this. And this also came from Heather. So on the back, I cut out this sweet square thing and put this number on it to cover up a thing that was underneath it that was the wrong color. So this was a Liberty. And then, um, and then I made this kind of looks like an address, you know, but this was just so pretty. The coloring was so pretty. And then I put my stamp here in the corner and it's got this postmark that was on there. So I like it. In the right journal, it'd be pretty. 
And then this is another um, piece from Heather. This is from her. That same Lily, Lily kit or Lilith um, new one. And it's such a pretty paper. I just loved it. I loved it so much. So that's why I put it on the outside. And then I had this wonderful stamp. I bought it new and it's never been used. And it's of a, some sort of a, I'm not sure where it's around. I'm thinking Spain, Mediterranean kind of thing. Maybe Italy. And they make lace there. So maybe it is Italy. Italy. And then I cut this lady. She wrote her address from in navy blue pen, fountain pen. So I cut it all out and completely changed it up. It's totally, the address was long and it started out differently and there was no return. So I cut the whole thing up and glued it down. I used these lines and then I put a rub on from one of um, Sam Poole's rub ons and I just think it's adorable. And then this is from that new kit of Heather's. Lily, Lilith, and it's just so pretty, so, so, so pretty, so that was a, just a fun one, you know, but you can see how realistic this looks, and how this doesn't look realistic at all, and even though this one's beautiful, it still looks realistic, and this one looks like art mail, which is fine, and then this is the last one I did that looks like art mail, too, and that's because she's cut out of fabric, I cut her out of some fabric and I love this green color and I didn't have any envelope that it would look good on so I ended up you know picking a wonderful French stamp with the same color and their their customs thing and then I this is from a postcard and I left part of the postcard showing up here and I left the postal mark and so it was pretty clear, and so it doesn't really stand out. And all in all, the black and the green and the white, I think it's really good looking. I really hemmed and hawed about the lady, but I was glad in the end that I did it, because it's kind of fun. This is such a pretty bunch of typeface that she sort of fit. And then her hand happened to be like, here's where you, where you need to take me. <laughs> so fun. So people, I hope this was good. I know it's long. You can always watch in two parts. And um, I had a blast. I have a million more to go. I could show you so many more that I have paper clipped together. But I am going to take a break because I need to work on some other projects. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for giving me credit when you make and show these. Mostly because I want to get my channel built on YouTube. And... Um, and I look forward to seeing what you do, if you do. And I'm uh, just really thrilled that you all liked the first video so much. I think it has over 300 views. And I that motivated me completely to, to figure out how to do more of them. Because it took a lot of figuring out, believe it or not. Um, and well worth it. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And... Please comment and let me know what you think and like it if you did and subscribe if you want to and tell your friends about it, my channel, to help me grow it. And I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much and take care. Bye-bye.